Welcome to Fusion Tonight. Taking a time out can be good for the soul. Pastor Scott is back from renewal leave. He's all freshened up like a squirt of Febreze. He'll be on the purple couch tonight. We'll share our prayers. We'll sing along with Ben. Now, scream and yell like he's somebody famous. Here's our host, John Cooper. Welcome to Fusion Tonight. I'm your host, John Cooper. How are we doing tonight? Wow, look at all of you. It's so great to see everyone. We have a great show for you tonight. I'm so excited. Pastor Scott is in the house. He's back. Uh-huh. Yeah. Super excited to talk to him and find all about Renewal Leave. So normally when I come out, I like to find lighter news stories and gather up a couple and make jokes. And I was in the process of doing that. And instead of coming up with multiple news stories to talk about, I got really distracted by just one news story that I just loved more than any story I've ever seen. Uh, This happened in Poland. A man was arrested robbing a store. And the way he got into the store was that he posed as a mannequin in the storefront window until it closed, and then (laughs) snuck into the store. And I was just like, as someone with ADHD who can't sit still, I was like, that's that's greatness, right? Like, that's magnificent, the patience. But, like, to just even think about something like that. And, like, I I heard the cops love the guy, right? Because they they were like, freeze! And he didn't move, like, at all. (laughs) He was just like... But I just, I, I just couldn't help but think, like, the, the fortitude it takes to, 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 to hold this pose for hours, you know, what's going through his head while you're standing there like, like a Barbie doll, you know, just like, I'm just Ken, and I'm going to rob this store at 10. <laughs> incredible, incredible. I, I, I'm just saying that he's my favorite person, and he deserved to take whatever he got his hands on. That's fantastic. <laughs> Very... I hate, I'm anti-crime, except for him. Very, very pro-crime with him. Like, if he doesn't turn his life around, I really hope he leans in, you know, to the mannequin thing. I just, some Russian mafia, we need someone for this heist. Who are we going to find? Boss, I know a guy. They call him the mannequin. (laughs) Because, man, he can steal. Anyway, all right, that's enough. That's enough of that. We have a fantastic show. We got to talk to Pastor Scott. Ben's here on guitar, waiting to play some music. So let's get started, and let's turn it over to Ben. What do you got? I don't know why you're not leading music, because your, your Ken song was fantastic. So that's, I just got to say. <clears throat> We're going to be singing Open the Eyes of My Heart first. Um, so if you want to stand up and sing with me, uh, that'd be great.
to see you. I want to see you all have a seat. All right. <laughs> nice job, Ben. All right. It is a worship service here at Fusion tonight, so we get to do churchy things. And the first order of business is our open mic time. And this looks a lot like joys and concerns. If you are more familiar with the traditional style of worship, so this is a chance. If you have something that you want to share that uh, we can pray about and be about, just raise your hand. I'll call on you and we'll talk about it. And then at the end, we'll pray together. So does anyone have anything that they want to share tonight? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Prayers that uh, it's it's only minor and that you you heal up quick. That's always scary. So I'm I'm glad you're sitting here. Hopefully that's a sign that it, uh, we we missed something major. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm going to round of applause. That's incredible. Yeah. Awesome. 58,000 meals. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so the next few days, so Thursday, Friday, Saturday, second part, they're putting on Mamma Mia. Oh. oh. Awesome. <laughs> Here I go again. All right. Thursday, Friday, Saturday at the high school. What, uh, what time are the shows? All right, 7 and 7 o'clock at Dyke New Hartford. Mamma mia! All right, in the back. Um, I got word that a former neighbor of ours from before we moved to Cedar Falls uh, just passed away, and oh. she um, has three kids that are left behind. Um, and so I would just really appreciate some prayers and for her. Her name's Leslie. Yeah. Just trying to keep them in my mind. Absolutely. We'll be praying for, for Leslie and her, her family and friends, and especially her kids. That's, that's awful news. So, and, and prayers for you, too. It sounds like you, you know, anytime you lose somebody that you know or, or had a relationship with, that's very hard. So, absolutely. Uh, Karen, I think I see your hand up. Uh, uh, my hometown is Monticello, and they have a shooting drill next year. So, oh, I have not pretty heard. Pretty small community, so they're all pretty chill. Absolutely. Praying for, praying for Monticello and, and everyone affected there, too. Does anyone else have anything that they would like to share? All right, if you will bow your heads uh, and be in an attitude of prayer with me. Gracious and Holy Father, we are so blessed to once again gather in the space to be with one another as we come to worship you. Lord, the point of any worship is to hopefully grow in our faith, to open our hearts, open our minds, and, and let new messages of faith and hope and love uh, enter and, and guide us uh, to be better people tomorrow than we were today, than we were yesterday. Lord, as we gather in the space, as we, as we gather for a time of prayer, we want to lift up the prayers uh, that we've shared in this room tonight of, of all the happenings in our life. Lord, while we have... Uh, Good news, we have, we have sad news that, that we share as well. Focusing on the good news, Lord, we're, we're thankful uh, for high school students uh, providing 58,000 meals to the food bank to better help feed and serve those in need. Um, you, you call on us to, to care for everyone, to care for the least of these, and we're so thankful that, uh, that our youth in our community are stepping up uh, to do just that. Lord, we thank you for, for the gift of entertainment and, and, and Dyke New Hartford uh, getting ready to put on Mamma Mia. Uh, it's so wonderful for communities to gather and, and to see shows and to, to share in laughter and joy as, as they watch musicals and concerts and, and, and all those sorts of things. Any, any time a, a group of people can gather to, to share a, a common passion or interest is just one more thing that... It brings us together, brings us together in a form of unity, 
uh, and distracts us from, from everything in the world that, that tells us why we're different. Lord, we're, we're always thankful for things that remind us of, of what we have in common and, and the joy that we want to share together. Lord, we also have sad news. Uh, Lord, we, we're thankful uh, uh, a fall at practice uh, wasn't scarier, but um, it's always scary to think of our youth uh, participating in, in something uh, going wrong. So, Lord, we're, we're thankful she's sitting in the audience tonight and seems to be okay, and, and we pray that uh, things like that are few and far between going forward, and um, we pray for good health as she continues to practice and, and hone in on her skills. Lord, we, we want to pray for, uh, for Leslie and her family um, and, and all of her friends and loved ones that know her and that are, are dealing with a great loss, uh, especially her three children. Lord, we, we know not why tragedy happens. We, we are assured that you don't orchestrate bad things to happen. You, you merely walk side by side with us uh, as we go through these things. Lord, we ask that you walk side by side uh, with everyone that, that's grieving, that's mourning, um, as they enter uh, the days, the weeks, the months, the years ahead, trying to adjust to, to a new normal and trying to adjust to a now empty chair at the dinner table. Lord, we want to extend prayers to the entire city of, of Monticello and, and everyone that, that lives there, everyone that's from there, everyone that's affected by the shooting that took place. Lord, we're always taken aback. We're always shocked uh, when we see awful, violent, scary things happen, especially when they happen close to home. And Lord, as we, as we try to make sense of, of, of the senseless, we ask that you, you walk with us and you continue to guide us towards solutions and resolutions that lead us closer to love, to empathy, to understanding, to, to paying attention to those around us in, in hopes that we can draw people towards the light before they fall to darkness. We ask that you, you use us as vehicles to, to bring people closer to you and, and continue to try in, in every fiber of our being to to not just wait for heaven after we leave this earth, but to try to create a little bit of heaven here on earth. Lord, we also lift up the prayers not spoken. Uh, so often all of us go through so many different things in our lives, highs, lows, you name it. And sometimes there's things that we want to share, but we don't know quite how. We don't have the words. We don't have the means to express ourselves just yet. And Lord, we know that even if we can't express those needs, those feelings to one another, we know that you see them. You know that you hear them. You know that you feel them. So Lord, anybody that is here that is struggling, we ask that you, you place your hand on their shoulder and you remind them that whatever they are going through, they are not alone. They have you. And, and when they are ready to, to open up, they have us as well. This, this wonderful community, this wonderful church that we've built, that we continue to build. On. So, Lord, as we pray for these things, we do so with the prayer that your Son, Jesus Christ, taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right. Ben is going to play us another song. And before he does, I want to remind you of our mission of the month. So every month here at Fusion, we like to donate to a specific cause. And uh, for the entire month of November, we are doing the giving tree. Um, it is a tree that will be set up downstairs, and I'll have little tags and all you have to do is go up to that tree and pull off a tag, and it'll tell you a specific charity uh, that you can give to and how you can give to it. And so it's a, it's a wonderful cause. Uh, the four are Hospitality House, Salvation Army, uh, Heifer International, We Care, and then there is a fifth, our, uh, our community meals that we do on Tuesdays. And so it's a wonderful cause, especially as we approach Thanksgiving and then Christmas. This is our most giving time of year, the time of year where we really reflect on not what we want for ourselves, but what we can give uh, to those around us. So while 
Ben is playing, be, be praying about the giving tree. We have two giving jars at each doorway. Uh, you're welcome as he's playing or, or on your way out to, uh, to make a kind donation towards this, this wonderful cause. So with that, Ben Edwards. If you want to sing along, I'm going to be singing Go oh, Praise the Name. Uh, you don't have to sing along, but if you want to, uh, you're more than welcome to. I cast my mind to Calvary, where Jesus bled and died for me. I see. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for our main event. He's been gone for a month, and now he's back. And we're going to find out where he went, what he was doing, and if he's glad he's back. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Pastor Scott Cober. Pastor Scott, welcome back. Hey, 
Thanks. I, uh, I think I just ruined this mic. But, you know, Been gone there. so long, you have yeah. no idea how to use our sound equipment. Th there's so many problems. <laughs> but I'll, I'll figure that out. You know later. what? I'll figure that out later. You yeah. might as well just leave it. It's going to get really it's weird gonna, really fast. You're, trying to, you're on camera. There's a whole, what whole audience what watching happened? now. The renewal yeah. leave has not gone well. I mean, the return yeah. so far. Yeah, uh, a lot's, a lot's changed since you've been gone. Really? Yeah, a lot's changed. You know, cha I, you Main know. Street is still not open. Yeah. Uh, and they keep yeah. shutting down Clay Street. Construction's so. still there. I don't uh, think I'm, much I've, has I've changed. constructed a mustache. I mean, oh, a lot is, is a lot has changed. You know, it's, so, that was, yeah. That you know, what, what's crazy is I, I, I've done this for years, where every November I grow a mustache, and we're like, oh, God, you look ridiculous. And now I'm, like, old enough, and we're like, that's a natural progression for you, yeah. you know? <laughs> to, look, to look ridiculous? I, don't, I, I think I look I, good I, with a stash, but it, it, it went from being, like, a joke, and everyone's like, yeah, 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 yeah okay, yeah, yeah. Switch. that's you. What's the, that's, guy, what, the guy who was lead singer for Queen? At, Freddie Mercury. Freddie, yeah. Yeah, he had... Uh, Freddie Mercury. Right? Yeah, better hair and a better voice, well, uh, I think, but... <laughs> I, I don't want to judge, yeah. Yeah. He rocked a wife beater a lot better than I do, too. Yeah, the, the sleeveless I tank. Don't, this yeah. was not on the script, the, the whole thing. No, queen. no. Yeah, all right. Keep we going. don't script anything all here. Right. Scott. I see that. You've been gone for a month. I have. I had to catch you up on the fact that I'm still here and this is still who I am. So yes, yes. You did not miss that. But right. here you are. You've been gone a month on something called renewal leave. Correct. Yeah. You know, I think Jerry Seinfeld would have a issue with the phrasing. You either renew or you leave. Yeah. You don't leave to renew. Yeah. You are on renewal leave. Yes, that's true. Yeah, so, um, but that last line there is pretty much true. You leave to renew. So it, uh, it's an opportunity that uh, clergy, um, United Methodist clergy are given every, within every four-year period, we can take a renewal leave of up to four weeks, four Sundays, four Four weeks. It's uh, it's quite a gift. You have to negotiate that, of course, with the congregation. And I was blessed to have uh, the congregation and the leadership uh, agree to to allowing me to have uh, this renewal leave, this time off um, in October. And so, uh, you know, what it offers. Actually, this is only the second one I've taken. I've been in ministry coming up on 25 years. Um, so seven years ago was the first one I had ever taken and then uh, this one. And I, it wasn't the kind of situation where I was almost like, ah, I don't know if I'd need that. I don't, you know. But I was encouraged to say, yeah, why don't you take the opportunity, since it's been seven years, um, to take another renewal leave. And uh, for me, the, the story of the two lumberjacks about renewal leave, um, does this, uh, yeah. I have a mustache, not a beard. You don't know I'm that story. So, so two lumberjacks. Um, both of the lumberjacks are working all day, and uh, the one lumberjack is just uh, you know a young man who's just tearing it up. He's just cutting up all sorts of wood, and he's constantly doing it for eight hours. He notices that his older um, colleague, who is a lumberjack, is taking a, every hour. He's stopping for five, ten minutes. He's like, man, he's just going to fall behind. There's no way he's going to do as much as I do. They get to the end of the day, there are eight hours of time, and uh, the, the younger looks over at the pile that the older has, and he notices that the older, um, the older lumberjack has a larger pile after eight hours. And he, he's like, what gives? You took, you took five, ten minutes off every hour, and I was going the whole time. He said, well, I didn't just rest. I also sharpened my axe. Oh. So it's, it's that kind of effort of sharpening the axe while you're taking time off, not just to take time off to you know, eat bonbons, but how do you, how do you nurture your soul um, and care for, for, uh, for your soul in a way that, uh, that brings you back a bit more refreshed and, and there's something to show for it. So you've come back as a smart axe. Is that what you're... <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Uh, All right. Smarter axe. Uh, smarter axe. Yeah. 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 It's good to. So, what did you do to sharpen your axe? Yes, Scott. So it was sharp axe, but I, you know, yeah. I like to blur lines here. Yeah. What did you do to sharpen your axe? So one of the things that I was exploring um, was uh, the connection of ministry and uh, and my hobby of pottery. So I was reflecting on that as I was um, at the potter's wheel and as I was building a, a wood fire kiln, which was something that I 
wanted to pursue during, during that time too. The other part was uh, spending time with family. Uh, of course, with, with Karen, we took a week and we were in the, um, the upper peninsula of Michigan, the south side of Lake Superior. And uh, just a, a week or so before that, I was in the Boundary Waters with some friends on the north side of Lake Superior. So those were uh, also renewal times out in, in, the, you know, in the wilds and doing some hiking and canoeing and fishing and, and all of that. So all those things kind of combined for the four-week period. Uh, a little bit of everything was going on. So really just ex exploring family time, yep. diving deeper into your hobby. So you mentioned yeah. the, the firewood kiln. Did you, uh -huh. did you get it up and working? Is it, is it a functional kiln? We don't know that yet. Um, <laughs> so it's a, it's a, it's a kiln, um, and it should function. It, uh, it's only had about the size of a campfire in it at this point, and I've only gotten it up to about 250 degrees. So it's had a little test there to see if there's a lot of, if the, you know, smoke is flowing in the right direction. But we're currently in an extreme drought situation. I don't know if you knew that, but uh, I did not know that. A wood fire kiln gets up to two thousand, over two thousand degrees, and has a flame about yay high out of the chimney, and the chimney's like about six to eight feet in the air. So the sparks are flying, and I don't think it's too safe to be firing that puppy up. To yeah, maybe not. Yeah, not. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. maybe so not. when the snow hits the ground, I may may, may fire it up. You can maybe. stay warm yeah. and and make plates. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any video or photographic evidence? I do. Yeah. Of these things. I think <laughs> cue the Chris guy. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. There it is. Yeah, I, that was the other uh, family time was my brother was helping with the bricks. I forgot to mention. Very nice. Shout out Don't take this the wrong way. I can tell Chris did not go on renewal leave with you. No, no. <laughs> he, did, he did not. The, I, that was the... all my work. Yeah, no, don't, don't blame Chris for that. But that's, that's quite... How long did that take you to construct that from start to finish? Start to finish. Um, it, it was the full two weeks, really. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, to level out that site took about... Four days of the whole time, yeah. Goodness gracious. So it, you, got a, you got a test fire on it. So yeah. Lake Superior, you constructed a fire kiln. Mm -hmm. So looking back on the four weeks, obviously that, that's probably a highlight for you sure. was getting that done. Yeah. 
We'll finish with the best parts of renewal leave. Okay. But was there any downsides to being away from the church for four weeks? Oh. Is there any, any low points of renewal leave? Low point of renewal leave was just back pain from uh, lifting and working with bricks and, <laughs> and bending over. So, yeah, that was the worst part is that I chose a project that actually roached out my back. You know, that's no good. Yeah. So I should have picked more wisely or hired somebody to do that. I don't know. <laughs> But you didn't. Yeah, I didn't. I you didn't. did it I yourself. Did it yeah. Everybody else was working, you know. They, they, they. That's true. <laughs> that's, that's exactly the problem. Yeah. So overall, the best, absolute best part of yeah. renewal leave, what was just like, yeah. yes, glad I did this. Yes. Well, um, definitely the, the best part was being able to spend more time with Karen uh, and 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 with my brother as well. Um, that was a unique experience. He lives in Kentucky. We don't we don't hang out much, so um, to be able to catch up with him and uh, find out about his family and, and mutually share what's going on in my life, that was, yeah, rich experience. Awesome. Now, you are a pastor, so I have to ask you biblical stuff. So, you know, I don't know if yeah. you're, like, familiar with, you know, that end of this conversation. Um, yeah. Work with but when you look, you look at the four weeks that you took and you mm -hmm. used, you know, the lumberjack story, yeah. you know, kind yeah. of a metaphor for what it means to, sure. you know, sharpen the axe, so to speak. Yeah. What would be your best pastoral advice to everybody else here that's mm. in the hustle and bustle of life yeah. and, and taking a pause? Yeah. How would you, how would you go about kind of selling, selling that to, sure. to everybody here? Well, I think that one of the things about we Americans is that we don't, uh, we don't really honor time off as, as something that is necessary or that somehow that person is being lazy when they do that. And, and therefore, it, it's kind of looked down upon in our society. It just feels like you know, taking time off, is, that's, that's a lazy kind of move to do that. And the reality is that there's something that can be greatly gained by taking some time off, by refreshing yourself and uh, reconnecting with family and utilizing that time in ways that actually uh, sharpens you, makes you better. Um, and, and so there's a, there certainly is a, a factor where some people could be lazy by taking time off, but that's not, that's not what I would advocate for, but for that sharpening of your, your, uh, your spiritual life. Absolutely. And, and, and one other question. So when I take time off from work, I, I joke with my coworkers that it feels like time rescheduled. If anybody works a really busy job where you take time off, yeah. but your work's kind of there when right. you get back, right? right. You don't actually right. get a break from the work. You just delay it. And yeah. sometimes that almost undoes some of that. Yeah. Does the rest time that you got. When you went on your renewal leave, did you come back to a laundry list of things? Or how was it set up so that you could yeah. come back actually refreshed and just... Right. Ease well, back in. I really didn't come back to a laundry list. I mean, we have, we have such an excellent staff um, to work with here that they picked up the pieces while I was away. There was a little bit of prep time. I would say that I did work a little harder those few weeks prior to taking time off to be sure that, like, there was a charge conference thing and there's a bunch of forms and I made sure all that was ready for an October meeting. So in some respects, it was on the front end. It wasn't that I came back to a long list of things to do, but I prepared you did prep for it. I, yeah. I guess what I'm getting prep at is yep. the renewal leave, we look at it as, oh, Pastor Scott got time off yeah. to renew. Yeah. But renewal leave is not just an individual thing. It's really a community effort mm. to collectively come nice. together to, to identify an individual that needs a break and to yeah. kind of take on responsibilities to allow that rest to be sure. meaningful. And I think yeah. maybe there's a lesson for all of us to seek rest for ourselves, but to also notice individuals yeah. and, and how we can help them yeah. maybe have a, a similar experience by taking on Yeah, no, that's an excellent point you're making and one I hadn't thought of. So kudos to you. Yeah. I have surpassed nice you. Job. Yes. Take more time off. Yeah. I am the king now. I'm just <laughs> kidding. <laughs> no. Well, Pastor Scott, I am I am really thankful that you got the four weeks and yeah. that you got a chance to, you know, dive deeper into your passions, get family time, yeah. get some rest and and come back really, you know, sharpened and focused. And I expect Sunday's going to be the best sermon you've ever done. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please get up for Pastor Scott. <laughs>
All right, well, we have gathered. I hope we've grown. And now it is time for us to go be Christ for one another together. We'll see you next time.